Hey there, I'm Hans Carpenter and welcome to the Art on the Square preview show for LBTV. This is the 14th annual Art on the Square and it will be held from May 15th through May 17th. This is the number two ranked art fair in the nation according to the Art Fair source book and over 900 artists applied. 105 will be part of the juried show. Everything that you see behind me will be full of people and artists come mid-May. And we will be talking to some of the artists involved to get their perspective on Art on the Square. I travel all over the country and I go to a lot of great shows. But when they hear that I go to Art on the Square, their, their faces are always the same. They say, you lucky guy. For me, it feels like a privilege. There's just so many things that, that are happening all around you. There's, you know, all the different, you know, cuisine. There's the different great little shops that are on the square that people are getting to go through. And you walk around and you see into the souls of all of these really creative people, you know, from the high school students all the way to through the artists. And then just the enthusiasm from the people around you, it is electric. It's just an electric, neat, you know, weekend. And so for anybody who hasn't been, I really stress coming. There's a very highly selected group of artists. And I think the patrons understand they're not gonna see 500 artists. They're gonna see 100 artists and they're going to pay attention to each one. And so I find that they come in and take the time to really understand what it is you have for them. I think a lot of people really like to know where, from whom, they bought their art or their craft. Uh, I think it adds to it. Uh, you get to know the person who put his its own self in the piece. So that's and for us, I think I, I love to see where you know who buy my parts. And I think I I actually really enjoy the whole uh, art fair things. I like I enjoy. I'm working in my studio by myself for uh, the majority of the year. So it gives me an opportunity to be with people. I love the other artists and it's just fun. To me, it's the best show I go to uh, because it's run by a community that really cares about artists. They spend a great deal of work to attract the kind of clientele that can appreciate good art and buy it. You know, Belleville has always had a real quaint feel about it. But when Art on the Square came about, and I'm actually going to, you know, give a little bit of, you know, give some uh, props to uh, the Salute to the Masters that they had in Fairview. Um, and the Salute to the Masters sort of opened the eyes of the community and thought, you know, wow, this could really be something. Um, and then Belleville took it to an even greater level. And they have opened it up so huge and they've done such a neat job that I really think that Belleville is known as an art community. Art on the Square features a high school art competition which will be housed behind me in the Bank of America building. There will be 46 prizes totaling $4,800 worth of cash to be handed out at an award ceremony Sunday, May 17th at 2 p.m. The public will have the chance to vote on the winners through Friday and Saturday. There were over 2,000 votes cast last year. LBTV got a chance to catch up with some of the high school art participants and their teachers to get their thoughts on Art on the Square and what they contribute. It's really, really cool that I get to see my work in a show with so many other high schoolers. There are so many talented people at my school and all the schools around here. The high school talent is amazing. And it's like that with every show that I'm in. Like, I'm always blown away by the other people. So it's just really exciting for me. And it's really exciting for my family to be able to go and see my piece up in Art on the Square. When you look around and you see that Belleville has transformed its square for a show that you're part of, I don't think there's anything that can quite explain how exciting it is, how nervous you get. It feels pretty fantastic because I'll admit that when I was little, I was not an artist. I was really, really awful at it until I started coming to Altoff and Mr. Westhouse was able to help me to build up my confidence in the painting and area. So to have my artwork actually being displayed in an event like this is really exciting for me. I'm delighted that they have that that kind of venue. There, there aren't that many high school shows around anymore. Swick, bless their heart, does a good high school show. Um, there used to be one over in St. Louis at Soulard that the person who, who 
oversaw and, and ran that show moved away. So Art on the Square is an incredibly good vehicle and opportunity to showcase very, very good high school art. I would say if I had to sum it up in a word, it would be pride. You know, they, they, it's confidence, it's pride. When you go to uh, an art fair, you know, keep in mind it's very different from a craft fair. An art fair is really, it's meaningful, you know, there's content, um, and people from all walks of life are coming here to see and experience this together. It means actually pretty a lot to me because I know a lot of people go there and see it, and there's a ton of artists that get in there. and. Hopefully one day I'll be one of them. So it really is a step for me to be in this competition. I actually really like it because it's helping me expand my horizons with art and get people's feedback on what I can work towards more. It makes me excited to see how they're going to react to what I put out in the world and see if I actually have a talent that I like to share. It's good for the kids to know and hear it from other sources than myself that they're doing good work. It, 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 it's, it's kind of like if your parents say you're doing really just beautiful stuff, but some guy down the street says, you didn't do that, that's really good, I don't think you could do that. That's, you know, and that's kind of what Art on the Square allows for, for people to see students' work that, you know, gives them a pat on the back or feedback. Uh, and usually it is very much a pat on the back that, that lets them know that they are in fact doing good work. And so the fact that they have a hundred artists really renowned artists that are all going through their work and they're, and they're jurying it and they're judging it. They're, this is really their main opportunity to really put their artwork out there for other artists. Um, and then on top of it, you have the public um, and they do the People's Choice Award and the People's Choice Award where actual, everybody who goes to, the, uh, to Art on the Square on that Friday, they get to go through the high school show and they get to vote on their favorites. Also afterwards, they give you like the little envelope and you can see who voted for you to have different things and it's really nice to see that people like enjoy my work enough to vote for me to have awards. It's really nice to feel like everything that I do is appreciated because I work really hard on my artwork. I mean, it feels great to know that people are looking at my work and and I would hope they're enjoying it. It means a lot to me because I am currently trying to look at colleges and trying to get actually into the art major. So I feel like being part of Art on the Square might help me with my chances of getting into college in that kind of area. I really love art. When I was younger, I'd be the kind of kid to sit at the table and do various different things. I don't know, it's exciting to take it out and go into my future with it. As always, it's free to get into Art on the Square, so come out, enjoy art from all over the country, enjoy the fine food, the drinks, and the live entertainment that Art on the Square has to offer, and stick around, because we're going to take a look at some of the artists who will be at Art on the Square and peek into their creative process. I'm Hans Carpenter for LBTV. Thanks for watching. I am a sculptor. I'm a metal sculptor. I make trees to tell stories. So what I did is I devised a media 40 years ago when I started doing this that would show trees realistically. And then with those trees, I tell stories of people in my life. The trees are made out of parallel strands of copper wire. I, I prepare all the wire to this form where they're all parallel. And then I can, using this undifferentiated form, I can then shape it and mold it into the shape you see there. So we start out like that, and I first start out by, by doing the, the initial character molding. The character molding will begin to tell a story. I then take that tree when it's molded, and I, and I add uh, an, an alloy into there. So I heat it up, and I heat it very hot and I fuse all the branches solid with this until it literally forms bronze right in place. Then I add another alloy on the surface that I can heat and work like clay. That produces the bark. So this is a, an alloy that I'm going to, to be using to, to strengthen the inner structure of the trunk so that the, so that the central root will be strong and be able to support the tree. I pour, I get, heat this very hot and then pour it in. And, and, it, and it will make everything very solid inside of there. 
so that the tree will um, not fall over. My trees, when they are anchored in the rocks, you cannot pull them out and they're sturdy. It takes about two weeks of the actual assembly, but I work on multiple pieces at once because there's many heating and cooling cycles, so I'm bouncing back and forth all the time. The hole in the rock will accept the main taproot of the tree and allow that tree to be firmly anchored onto the rock. This is a piece of sandstone. The hole goes deep into the rock, two inches into the rock, to give a good foothold for that tree with a taproot. Andrea is my assistant here and she does the finishing work on the tree. Up till now, I've created the tree to tell a story. And what, what Andrea is doing now is doing the final twisting on this that's going to make it really look pretty. So she's going to go over this and spend the time necessary to make all those branches look exactly the way they should be. At that point then, the tree is not yet firmly mounted, but then I will then mount it in the hole in the rock and then do some final work on the roots and some finishing and then off to the show. I set out to do this to tell stories of my brothers, first of all. I have four brothers, and I wanted to honor each one as an individual. I just used trees to tell stories. What has developed uh, eventually came to be called art, um, but it's still uh, just stories of people, and a lot of work, and a lot of passion. I like to connect people up with a tree that means something to them. When they come into my booth, I, I, look, I look at them, and I listen to them, and I find for them, and they find for themselves, a tree that's like them. So when a person buys the right tree, they will often have tears in their eyes. And they'll go, oh, and they'll say, honey, that's you. That's what I'm designed to do. I love people, and uh, this is a blessing that I can do. I want to meet people face to face and hear their stories and then connect them with a the tree. The very first tree I ever made was this tree. It's the aspen tree. And it's a story of my brother Paul and his wife. It's really two trees that are growing together with a lot of energy and supporting each other as they grow. That's Paul. My, my other brother Dan is a very different kind of a guy. He grows steady and regular, orderly, and predictable. We think sometimes he's a little boring, but we like him that way because he doesn't pull any punches and he gives great advice. Brother Dan. So I kept making trees and when my wife came along, she says, well, what kind of a tree are you? And for her, I make the red bud. The red bud is a tree that is the first colored tree I made. So I put colored flowers on there, three different colors to show the progression of flowers over three days and it reminds you that beauty is not forever. There's a, there's a movement and these flowers will drop. So you appreciate it now. And when I gave this to her, she started crying because she is a red bud and red buds are all about showing feelings. Um, here's one that I made for my grandmother. It's a story of giving. I call it sanctuary. But my grandmother spent her entire life uh, trying to give everything away. Everything she got, she gave to somebody else. And by the time she reached old age, uh, she said, I'm so blessed because I've finally been able to give everything away. So this tree opens up its heart. It opens up all its limbs and it's turning itself over the forest. Its legacy is one of giving. Um, sometimes I'll take a, a tree like my aspen over here and I'll make it celebrate. And we'd have to come over to see this one. And I put gold leaf on this one. So here we have the same aspen tree now celebrating in the fall as only aspens can do. And, it, and I make it so that it can quiver. I, I do that by actually applying the gold leaf with an electrostatic process that causes the gold leaf to flutter down and become attached by one edge so it can flutter in the slightest breeze. I want to show energy, lots of energy, quivering. Uh, this tree I made for our wedding anniversary, and it's really two trees. It's called Kindred Spirits, and it's a story of two trees growing together on one rock. One's strong and powerful, the other one is small and embracing. We don't know who is who in this, in this situation, but we know when I'm in a shopping mall, this is me. When we're in the woods and there's bears around, that's my wife. So we, it, but it's a story of our marriage. I 
I make functional pottery, I use brown stoneware for it. It's important to me to make functional things that people will use. It's wonderful that they place it on a, on a shelf and they love it. I love that, but I put a lot in every piece to really make it functional. And I don't, I don't know, but it makes me really happy when people use them. There's also a challenge, I think, in it, because so many people are making functional things, and you know, you want to make it just a little different. The whole thing started because basically I suffer from what most uh, potters suffer, and we all get arthritis eventually. <laughs> and I needed to get up from the wheel. I love working on the wheel. So I started to alter my pieces. So I start everything on the wheel. I get up, I, start, I really like oval shapes. So a lot of my pieces become oval eventually. So wheel, hand building, uh, and then I start adding pieces to it. It depends on the piece also. If it's a mug, you add a handle. If it's a teapot, there's the spot, the handle, and then those other, I decorate some of them, uh, and then actually you fire it the first time, and my glazing process takes me as long as making the piece. I see my pots, I think, as um, somehow people, Oh, because they're a little animated. They move, they dance, the goblets get a little tipsy, you know, stuff like this. <laughs> I think that my garden has a huge influence on me. I can't really explain it. I love nature. I make bird houses because I love birds. And I think that my colors, uh, like most people, your childhood has a huge effect on you. And growing up in Israel, the green and the blue was uh, a major color. I mostly concentrate right now on liquor containers. And the reason I do it is um, I, uh, my husband and I left Israel because of political reasons. And we did not want to be a part of the occupation anymore. And um, when I was very young, I, used, I worked as a bartender in several very, um, uh, I don't know how to explain it, several bars in, in, in Jerusalem where a lot of or, um, co foreign correspondents and intellectuals would come. It was the late 70s and um, we were uh, mingling with Palestinians, which is, which is, it's not happening anymore. But in one of them, I even had a Palestinian boss, which could not happen now in Israel. And I, I, there's, I, I have a very big place in my heart uh, remembering those times. These are times that probably won't come back. And I think that that's why I have this I don't know, special feelings towards uh, bars. And I think that the li liquor containers are an homage to that special, wonderful time that probably won't come back.